Last time I looked at how Van Thorpe's or multiple metric can be used in practice to help with the analysis of the individual trades in your trading strategies. This time we turn our attention to both expectancy and the SQM or the system quality number. Now, although Van Tharp designed these for comparing different strategies, I think that they might also be really useful at helping to assess the results of optimizations by enabling us to compare the effectiveness of different parameter values. Stay tuned. In this episode, I put two of Van Tharp's metrics, expectancy and the system quality number, to the test in an optimization. I'll be comparing them with some of my other favoured metrics, such as compound annual growth rate over the mean drawdown. Now, strictly speaking, I don't think this is how Van Tharp intended their use. He always intended them to be used to compare different systems and different trading strategies. However, I have a hunch that they could be used in optimizations to help with the effective selection of parameter values. Let me take you through my results. So this spreadsheet contains all of the results from an optimization. And as you can see in this particular instance, there were 192 different parameter combinations. So in terms of the actual parameters I did optimize, it was these three, and I think there were four or five different values for each of these parameters, which multiplied up to those 192 combinations. And in the file, I've got various different metrics that I've used to measure the performance. So for example, the compound annual growth rate over the maximum drawdown, compound annual growth rate over mean drawdown, the modified profit factor, which I've explained in previous episodes. But also here, I've outputted the expectancy of each of those parameter combinations and also the system quality number. But before we look at how good each of these are at selecting the optimal parameters, there's some other metrics that I think it's worthwhile looking at. So for example here, this is the relationship between the expectancy and the SQN values. And interestingly, we can see a number of bands going across the scatter chart here. And I think the reason for this is because one of the components in the calculation of SQN, of course, as we saw last time, is the standard deviation of the R multiple values. So what I think is happening here is that different parameter values result in different variances of those R multiples, which cause the lines to form these bands on the chart. But what's very clear here is that if we used either expectancy or SQN in order to identify the best parameters, these would definitely choose different values. So this one over on the right hand side here is the maximum value for expectancy. And so this is the one that we would choose if we were using that particular metric. Whereas this one at the top here is the one that we would have chosen if we were using SQN. So even though both of these are based on R multiples, that additional factor of the standard deviation is obviously playing a big part in determining the eventual value of the SQN score. So we'll see what impact that has in a moment. Now, as some of you will know, CAGR over mean drawdown is one of my favored metrics. And the interesting thing here is that the SQN actually assesses the parameter values in a very similar way. So I'm really quite excited about seeing how this performs in relation to CAGR over the mean drawdown. Also, you'll know that my favored standard performance metric is profit factor. And again, this performs in a very similar way to SQN, as you can see. 
And in fact, in this particular instance, if you look at the top right hand point here, if we were using profit factor or SQN, these would both identify the same set of parameters as being the best because they share the same maximum value. So let's now take a look at the effect of using each of these as our performance metric. So what we have on the left hand side here are the various different metrics that I've performed my analysis on and the parameter values that each of those metrics said was the best. Now I've colour coded these because many of the metrics came up with the same values. And as we saw on the chart a moment ago, SQN came up with the same value as profit factor. And incidentally, modified profit factor also chose the same parameters. Equally, when we looked at CAGR over mean drawdown, that was the same as CAGR over maximum drawdown and also the coefficient of correlation R. In fact, the only one that came up with different values was expectancy. So what I then chose to do was to perform a walk forward validation phase to look at what the resulting equity curves would be based on these different parameter values. And these are the results. So let's start with the first curve, which was based on the parameter values chosen by expectancy. Here, as you can see, the equity line is far worse than for the other two. Now, this is probably understandable because expectancy was never developed to be a performance metric and to be used in this way. And so it doesn't surprise me at all that it didn't perform very well. That's not, of course, to say that expectancy isn't useful. On the contrary, expectancy is an incredibly informative metric in terms of giving you information about the results you can expect from your system. It's just that it doesn't perform very well as a predictor. But then as we move across to the second equity curve, this is the one that was based on the parameters chosen by SQN, profit factor and modified profit factor. And as you can see, this performs much better. And then on the right hand side here, we have the equity curve that was a result of the parameters chosen by the CAGR over drawdown metrics and R. Now, if you look at these two, they are actually very similar. And we could have guessed that from looking at the charts here. Generally speaking, there's a very strong relationship between SQN and the other metrics. And if you look at the difference between CAGR and SQN here, these three values that give the best performing parameters, any one of these would be expected to have fairly similar results. And so just to compare these two charts on the right hand side together, we can show those alongside the first one also to look at the differences. And so on this occasion, it was the parameters chosen by the compound annual growth rate over drawdown metrics that performed slightly better. However, as you can see, there's a lot of commonality between these two. Now, the thing that you have to remember is that this is just one test. And so the statistical significance of these results alone are not high. So one of the things I'm going to be doing now moving forward is to incorporate the SQN metric into all of the optimizations that I perform. And I'll be continually monitoring the effectiveness of that in the same way as I've done here alongside my other preferred metrics. Because I think there's certainly a chance that SQN, when we look at many more optimizations, may perform as well or even better and as I perform that research, I will, of course, keep you informed of the results. So I'm hoping that you found that brief research study as interesting as I did. And as I say, I'll be keeping my eye on SQN in future optimizations to see how that performs against the others. That's it for this time. Please do remember to give me a thumbs up. And now until next time, trade safe.